Thanks for tuning in to the Women's Vibrancy Code, a podcast dedicated to helping women move from exhausted to energized, balance their hormones, and feeling turned on by their life, their lover, and themselves. I'm your host, Mariah Brown. I'm a Yale and functional medicine trained women's health expert, midwife, mom, keynote speaker, and self-made entrepreneur. I'm the founder of my signature program, the Women's Vibrancy Code. So sit back relax, and let's chat about your energy, hormones, libido, and embracing your feminine power. Oh, and you might want to have pen and paper to take some notes on some of these episodes. Mariah Brown here with Vibrancy Code. I'm with Suli Zink. She comes to us today from Salt Lake City, Utah, although you find her jet setting pretty much anywhere in the world at any given day. <laughs> True. Yes. I've, I've kind of toned down a little bit and let the kids go to school, but yeah, we'll, we'll hop on a plane here soon. What are the ages of your kids? Um, I have a 10 year old, a nine year old and a three about to be four year old. He'll tell yeah. people that. I got to meet a couple of them and yeah. mine are 10, eight and five. So we already have that in common. So yeah, very soon. Wait, and do you have two boys also? Boy, girl, girl. Oh, so you have two girls. Yeah. Okay. So for those of you that are listening today, this, so Suli's a powerhouse. She's a mom of three, <laughs> as you can, as you've already heard, she's been married for 12 years to her best friend. And she <laughs> is the CEO of sales with Suli. She's the senior VP of pure energy, co-owner of a car management company called ride off and a real estate owner and entrepreneur at heart. She's been knocking down doors for the last 14 years and is the only woman in the door-to-door space to obtain the Golden Door Award three consecutive years in a row. So I already have a couple questions. (laughs) Suli is a force with her powerhouse hubby and gets to be a stay at home dad his her husband does and her instagram handle is there in the description and we were thinking we had a little chat off camera we're thinking okay this we're going to be talking about knowing yourself so you can create build and sell so first question suli what is the golden door award yeah so in the door-to-door space it's kind of like funny and unique that we are like this small little niche, but in our world, it really isn't. So what happens is every single year there is a um, event or like a ceremony that is held in Salt Lake City, Utah, and they give out different awards um, nationwide. So it doesn't matter which company you work for, um, which color polo or anything like that. They basically have standards that you have to hit in order to be able to get this award for your industry. So the industries are roofing, window, um, alarms, solar, pest control, internet. And they have, they're like really high standards in the sense of like, there is not a ton of people who are going to attain these awards. And it's not, and it's like a, it's a nationwide thing. It's not just like a, uh, uh, on a small level. And so for pest control, which is where I had gotten my um, first one, you had to have at least $500,000 in revenue or service um, a thousand pest control accounts. So in 2019, my pandemic year, I serviced 2019 pest control accounts. And then in solar, you, in order to be able to get the Golden Door Award, you have to have 130 accounts installed. And most people don't do that in a typical year mm-hmm. in our space. So that's how I, I am. So them. you've got a lot of homes with no bugs and a lot of homes with low electricity bills. Yes. <laughs> And you're obviously really good at sales. Um, I think I'm good at storytelling and communicating. Mm, I love that. Yeah. Um, I was just having a conversation with someone this week and she says, I don't do sales. Yeah. I Then you just don't do storytelling. Yeah. <laughs> so what does that mean to you as a storyteller and you're doing door to door? I imagine anyone who's listening, if you have an online presence... Yeah. Or you are quote unquote 
selling yourself yeah. or if you are thinking about going back to work and you'd like yeah. to work at a jewelry store or do, oh, uh, I don't know, Etsy sales and you want to yeah. sew things, you want to create something, you want to whatever yeah. it may be. That, Essential that oils, be like, lemon, yeah. uh, Lululemon, like all these things that I feel like a lot of stay-at-home moms do really. Even too. network marketing. I Anybody Even who's in network. the network marketing industry. So the art of storytelling. Yeah. What is if that? You, um, so for anyone who's ever watched Shark Tank, or knows Mark Cuban um, or uh, Jesse Itzler, one of the things that they uh, always speak about is sales and how all it is is if you learn how to tell a story, if you are coming to the table and being able to um, solve people's problems, <laughs> which comes with selling, if you can figure out a way to solve people's problems, you'll never want for anything. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what I feel like has happened in the dynamics of, you know, me getting into sales with pest control and with solar and, and even at home, having to sell my kids on bedtime or the importance of, of taking a bath or why we do need to worry about school attendance. Like, I just mm -hmm. feel like it's every aspect of our lives and I just magnified it in sales is all. Hmm. So fascinating. When I hear I'm a good storyteller. The, what I hear is you're good at telling your story, but then yeah. I'm hearing that sales is really solving other people's problems, which then makes me think, well, really, you're just helping them highlight their story so that you can get clarity on what their problem is and then yes. hel help them see that you have a solution to that problem. So when it yeah. comes to storytelling, are you telling your own or are you helping others tell theirs? Both. So I feel like when it comes to door to door and my job specifically, I am, yes, I am sharing their next door neighbor's story. I am talking about uh, the electric company and telling their story on how they have the power to be able to increase your electric rates whenever they want. And you don't have a say because you want your lights on or you're going to be a pilgrim and get candles. And so I'm going to have this conversation and telling the story. I'm like, Hey, Mrs. Or Mr. Homeowner, you didn't know this, but you actually have two options. Like you today, you can decide that you want to move forward with actually owning something, creating an asset and, and creating the equity uh, in your home, or you can continue to build the equity of whoever your current provider is. You can continue renting, you can continue doing these things, but here's the cool thing. I'm just here to show you which option best suits you. You tell me which option works and we'll figure out what to do to take those next steps. If that option is to continue paying someone else's bills, great. You don't have to do anything. If, you're, if, if you want to be able to own and actually never worry about an increase in your electric bill, great, we're gonna go this direction. And so I feel, and then when it comes to example, well, what does it look like on your house? So do you have solar on your house? Yes. So I'm then gonna be sharing my story on exactly how solar works at my house. Like what the equity is gonna be able to do for my daughter when she's 18 years old and be able to uh, own her own electricity, own the mortgage of the home and be able to essentially, you know, have freedom to work on just school or gymnastics mm -hmm. or whatever that she finds fascinating to herself. So I feel like I am going to tell whoever story that I need to, depending on the situation. Mm -hmm. So then your story, where did you grow up? Um, so I was born in California. My mom had me when she was 16 um, years old. So I definitely had a journey. I was raised by my grandparents in the city of West Valley City, Utah. And both my grandparents didn't know a look of English whatsoever. So I had to do a lot of translating and a lot of just figuring life out, you know, from the mm -hmm. age of three to um, to now. But yes, I and what, So in, what was their first language? Uh, Tongan. Tongan. So both yeah. of them were Tongan. Yeah, my grandparents, yeah. And so you grew up in a Tongan home raised by your grandparents. Yeah. And so learned to tell their story and translate their story when they potentially couldn't tell it themselves in the language of the country that they were living in. Yes. And then there must have been moments. I mean, you obviously have drive, you have confidence, 
I mean, I've, we've been in person together three different occasions that I can think of in LA <laughs> and in Utah. Yeah. And you have a very strong, confident presence where it's like yeah. nobody's messing with Suli. Like she's out there. <laughs> this is an ambitious woman out there conquering the world. Um, where do you think your confidence comes from? Um, you know, uh, a lot of people come from, and I don't even want to say like broken homes, but a lot of people come from nurture and, you know, come from seeing, um, you know, things as easy or, or, or not necessarily easier that they can uh, obtain whatever it is that they want growing up. And the lens that I saw was in order for me to be able to have the life that I want, or in order for me to be able to, um, you know, find success, it was based on what I didn't have. So mm -hmm. growing up and watching my grandparents barely being able, well, my grandpa, like working at a company who wasn't even paying him all that amazingly because he was like an immigrant or my grandma, because she didn't have a driver's license or anything like that, just couldn't have a job. So she just lived off of the state and seeing what we didn't have created a sense of drive for me for like a very young age that it was just like my kids aren't going to experience this like I'm grateful for what I didn't have growing up because without it I wouldn't have the drive um, that I currently have but I think if I had a different life maybe I wouldn't be as driven as I am <laughs> yeah so that law of opposites the contrast yeah. propels you forward um I was at a stoplight the other day and I looked to my left and there was a Taco Bell and in the window was a big sign that said hiring a store, a, a manager for $18 an hour. Yeah. It's like, wow. Right. <laughs> so what is your life like now? If from, if we talk about law of opposites, opposites and the contrast for you, for your childhood compared to the life that you're creating for your three children, yeah. Can you just paint a picture to the life that you that you have already created and are actively creating? Yes, yeah, so I feel a little guilt, and um, I'll be honest, and I share this with my uh, with my circle often. I want to be an influence and help people who you know came from the the same situations where they didn't have much and things like that, and so. I feel guilty that, you know, all these years I've done everything necessary to get to the lifestyle that I am, that sometimes I don't always, you know, publicly and openly enjoy it. But my kids have traveled to more countries than most people read about in storybooks. Like they've eaten and we, we go and see and do things that people can, I can't even pronounce um, type of thing. We have multiple investments and we have multiple primary homes that most children and most kids are just like oh this is you know our, our home or, or or our place and our kids will be the first to let you know how many homes and where they live and where they've traveled um and what they do like my kids have started a little candy business and they love to talk to their friends about how they have a credit card how they're going to be balancing their checks how they're going to be stopping at the bank and dropping this off and how um, for their next birthday, they're going to be choosing a place on the map that will just essentially get on like that day and go wherever their hearts desires. But my kids don't need or lack for anything. Mm. And so where does the guilt come from? Definitely from childhood. I know for sure, just because a lot of the people that I've grown up with, even family members that I get to see on a regular basis, they're not where they'd like to be you know they're not there's just a lot of people that I'm around who you know struggle who could barely you know afford a car note or food or, or anything like that and as much as I train or coach or give resources unless people are willing to make those uh, adjustments they'll stay in the same situation but I still just it's a man like I want everyone to have what I have. Like, right. I, I want everyone to have it. And that's a very different feeling to, to want others to have the life that you have is one thing. 
to feel guilty for the life that you have is a whole nother piece. (laughs) And so I'm just, um, you know, I heard a quote is something like it for me as a healthcare provider, if I'm working with women who aren't healthy, they're exhausted, they're not sleeping, they're carrying extra weight, whatever it may be, they've been diagnosed with cancer, me becoming unhealthy does not help them become healthy. Yeah. (laughs) In the same way of if you have created success and wealth and an exceptional life, to feel guilty for that or create anything different still doesn't help those that haven't yet created. Yeah. I love like how you say that because it is for sure um, the latter. And I like the way that you put it in the sense of like, I really, when I first started in door to door, just because it's really dominated by men. So it's a lot of competition and a lot of like, Hey, don't share tips and tricks because there's not enough, you know, success for everyone. And so to being a woman in the space where there's not a lot there when I first started, it was kind of like, yeah, that same scarcity mindset, like, no, like, let me not share my tips and let me not do these things because it means that, that I'm not going to get it. And then getting to a place into my life where it's just like, holy cow, like the universe has literally created a space where every single person who puts in the work and wants it can truly find success, whatever it's, whatever the definition Uh, Mm -hmm. of successes and so I do feel like I want everyone to have it and uh, it the the guilt isn't as much as wanting everyone but I'm still I guess saddened that uh, yeah you know not everyone's there absolutely I mean me too yeah I feel saddened that not every woman feels exceptional and turned on Mm -hmm. and and loved in a relationship and safe and cared for and I And I'm so grateful that you've taken the steps and you've created the life that you have because you've Mm -hmm. forged a new path. I'm hearing loud and clear, especially in the industry that you're in, that to be doing it as a woman is not so common. No, (laughs) or easy. (laughs) Or even, uh, I mean, are there other women? Um, So let's just say that if you were to go into that, that there's, well, at our conference, there was probably almost 3,000 uh, in attendance and less was, and less than 100 were women. Wow. And that's what it looks like in our space uh, period as well. When you go to different companies and offices, doesn't matter what type of door to door, you won't find, you know, more than four or five women uh, on a team or, or in a company. It's just, yeah, it's tricky. So what made you different? That's a good question. And I was asked this the other day and I like to tell people that I'm not any different than Mariah. Like I'm not any different than them, but the biggest thing for me, what separates me from a lot of people is my level of consistency. Like Mm -hmm. I don't have the schooling or the degrees or the, the, the stature or the cars or all the fancy Uh, you know, things to make me look cool. Uh, I've got work ethic and I've got drive. I've got the stories and the reminders that I had to scrub toilets at 15 years old just to be able to play on the basketball team because my grandma couldn't afford a basketball uniform. I, you know, had to go and scrub toilets just to be able to, you know, earn and and get uh, money to provide for myself at lunch because my, you know, grandma didn't always have it. Like I couldn't go to Lagoon. I couldn't go to, you know, or travel with friends and things like growing up because we just didn't have it. And so for me, those reminders and those stories and my background and where I grew up from, I think that's just, it's just my story that just makes me work a little bit harder. Mm. It's fascinating. I, we've never shared this, but I have a similar story. So I've worked since sixth grade. Wow. And my dad owned a business. Okay. So after school, I would go to the factory and label bottles. And I was at the, it was a juice company. So I'd be in the grocery store like <laughs> selling juice, giving away samples. In the summertime, he had me learning accounts payable and receivable and doing accounting. And at one point I was, 
hiring and interviewing people and I just always worked. So I played volleyball. And if I wanted to make the team and have my uniform, I had to figure out how to come up with the money. If I wanted to eat outside the home, I had to figure out where to come up with the money. Yep. (laughs) And, you know, if I wanted to go to college, I had to figure out where I want to come up with the money. Yeah. And um, yeah, so I can relate to you in that way. And so for the. Here you are with the stay at home, stay at home hobby too. Yeah, we both have stay at home hobbies and we're both creating a life. So for the women that are listening and maybe they're like, oh gosh, I also had a hard knocks life growing up. It hasn't all been handed to me. I feel like uh, there, I want to create a life for myself and my children. I don't really know where I want to go. I, I think I want to build something. Mm-hmm. And for the woman who's out there, getting her done, building a business, showing <laughs> yeah. up either in sales or, um, as you say, storytelling and, and, and being the front facing woman who, you know, my story is my brand. Yeah. Any words of wisdom for the women that are listening? Yeah. Like I definitely have some really good friends who, you know, enjoy staying at home and we share like memes and different things about, um, you know, sometimes women who, and I don't even want to use the word just because staying at home is like, it's a, it's a calling that not everyone, um, can fulfill. And so women who do stay at home and are tending to children and things like that, the, the mere, what you're doing at home, like matters, like what kind of stories are you telling your children? Like what kind of examples are you living to these little human beings who are going to be adults one day? Like I want my daughter to see that if she wants to run a business and be a mom, she can do that. I want my sons to be able to see if their sisters or if their girlfriends or if their wives want to be able to go and take on the world and do those things. It's possible because Mm -hmm. they saw their mom do it. And for those of you women out there who are doing exactly that, who are running businesses, who are finding some of the success, like what are we doing to get into like that next level? Like I, totally believe that we are never in a life of not learning. And I think that's one of the things that has helped me is I am always looking for mentorship. Like I'm always looking to like, it's not about the 1% because we're never, ever going to be on this universe and, and have made it because we have so many aspects, spiritual, physical, um, you know, our mindset, there's just so many things to tackle. But I just feel like if we're constantly in a state of learning, from other women, from other moms Mm -hmm. and letting other people in that we'll we'll find more fulfillment, like on this, on this planet, like we'll just find more fulfillment in life if we just reach out and connect. Yeah. There's so much that I love about what I heard you say for the women who are empowered, stay at home mothers, raising children for the women who are empowered career women, for the women who are empowered, single women, for the women who are empowered, married women, whatever, no matter the scenario, the stories that we tell ourselves to take an account of through what lens am I choosing to see my world? Do I see it through the lens of gratitude and joy and I'm powerful and I'm spectacular and I'm enough and I'm sexy and I'm able to own my life knowing that life is not happening to me. It's happening for me and by me. Yeah. And to come from that foundation it's then felt and it will yeah. then paint whatever story we're telling. <laughs> yeah. In any dynamic like uh, of our lives, our PTA meetings, our soccer mm-hmm. fields with our kids, like how we're teaching them to react to other humans. We just have uh, so much influence and so much power. I just feel like if more of us women were uh, connecting and relating, like we would just be more powerful unit. And that's one of the things that I'm trying to create in the door-to-door space and with the lack of, of women here is that sense of connection, that sense of being okay to reach out, that sense of, hey, there really is enough for all of us, mm-hmm. like not just Suli, but for all of us. Right. Especially amongst women, for us to know that we have that circle, yeah. that feeling of other women to share with and and have our circular communication. I heard you um, 
kind of hint on your own personal self care. And you know, <laughs> I always do it with, with, I love doing pies check in. So when I journal or if I'm okay. facilitating a group call, I'll often have everybody just do a pies check in. So it's P I E S S. So it's physical, okay. intellectual, emotional, spiritual, and sexual. Okay. And so when you think about your own personal self care, to keep your mindset solid, to keep yourself intellectually stimulated, to keep yourself emotionally growing and learning yeah. and spiritually and sexually alive and connected. Where are your go-tos? Who are the authors you listen to? What retreats do you go to? What coaches <laughs> do you hire? Like, where do you go to pour in so that your stories and, and how you're influencing the world is really to the, to the expansiveness that you want it to be? Yeah, I, I love this question. It's loaded, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so uh, first of all, in the door to door space, there is a lot of coaching, there's a lot of mentorship, there's just a ton of, you know, tools and, and, and resources and where I've gotten into my my life, I feel like my go to's have been separating those tools. So I'm in door to door, and there's tons of masterminds and things like that. But where I'm going to be going to my masterminds are with people that don't have anything to do with door to door because it keeps me grounded. It keeps me seeing beyond what's just happening in my little circle, uh, you know, of door to door. So I am in a um, mastermind with uh, Scott Duffy. Uh, and Tony. I'm in that too. Yes. You're in there with me. <laughs> yes. And it's how I, yes, it's how I met you. And had I not been in these types of, of groups or in these types of masterminds, I wouldn't have met you to be able to bring into my little, you know, circle or lens that be, you knew nothing about before me. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and it's going to be the same thing. I feel like when I'm there, you know, in those masterminds and tools and things that I want to use, it's kind of outside of that mastermind so that I can keep this uh, for me in a sense of like, man, I, I love these relationships. It always stays new, uh, to me. And I have like a therapist and a psychologist that I go to who are not in any parts of my circle. They're not, mm -hmm. they weren't referred to me by door to door. They weren't referred to me in a mastermind. They weren't referred to me in the circles that I'm in because it just keeps me like, oh, I always have someone that I can reach out to who will be objective who is not a part of like my little circle and knows my background and can just help me stay objective in all of those aspects. And so I am a big podcast fan. Like I love uh, Oprah. I, I, I mean, I have a podcast. I love Andy Fricella. I love anything that has to deal with sales. I listen, the, the way that I learned how to invest in my first uh, rental was I was listening to a podcast called the Rental, rental Income Podcast. And I'm just obsessed with that. Like I listen to it like all the time. I read books by Dave Ramsey. It's how I got out of debt and stay out of debt and now teach other people those seven step process of getting out of debt and staying out of debt. Um, I just, I, I absolutely love books and podcasts and assignments from coaches. And so mm -hmm. I do have a health coach and a life coach, again, not in any of the circles um, that I'm in because it just helps me to stay grounded within my own uh, with my own sphere, um, yeah. and kind of what I'm doing there. Mm -hmm. So I'm hearing therapists, masterminds, health coach, life coach, podcasts, books, yeah, to perpetually grow. And, um, I imagine change, not only who you be in the world and how you create the legacy, but also how you teach and how you be yeah. in your relationship and how you show up as a mom. A, a thousand percent. Like I feel like in these masterminds and some of the other people and, you know, hearing their stories and the way that they're sharing it, it changes my mind. And it's like, and I question, I'm like, okay, why do I think that way? Like, why did I decide I wanted, I, I wanted to do this? And so if I wasn't around other people who I trust and are, you know, in a position or a life that I could see myself living, I, it, it, I wouldn't know what to go off of, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, honestly. You mentioned podcasts. What's the name of your podcast? So for those that are listening, um, sales with Suli <laughs> sales yeah. with Suli. So for those of you who want to lean in more and, um, get to know Suli a little bit more in her space sales with Suli might be a space 
for you to go check out since you're here in the podcasting mm-hmm. world, if you're listening to this. And <laughs> yeah. for those of you over in the Facebook world, her Instagram uh, link is there in the description. So you're going to have to go peek over an Instagram. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there is a whole thing called Instagram for you Facebook people. <laughs> I know. I need okay. to get on Facebook. I'm not a Facebook person. So you're a mom. You have a stay at home dad that's taking mm-hmm. care of the kids. Mm-hmm. You're still doing door to door sales and training yeah. others to do door to door sales. Yeah. And you have a car something rather company and yeah. real estate. Yeah. Wow. How many hours in your day do you have? So here's the cool thing about being in um, masterminds and um, being involved with other people who kind of are where you want to be. When I first started in door to door, it was definitely scarcity. Like I have to do everything myself. I'm saving all the money so that I don't have to like, you know, spend on all these things in order to see a massive jump in my personal life. Um, and be able to have time to be able to be a mom and a wife uh, and a leader, I have to have systems. I have the same 24 hours uh, in a day as everyone else, but because of the jobs and the work ethic, you know, I may have a couple dollars more to be able to afford the nannies, to be able to afford multiple assistants who one takes all my calls for this, like one takes all the customers and responds. And then, you know, I have a hubby who's like in charge of all these different things that are happening, you know, with housing. And then as far as like the companies that I'm involved in, if I can't be hands off and be able to help create systems, I don't want to be a part of it. And so that's exactly what we did with our car management. We have branch managers in places. We have employees in places to where it's like people wouldn't even know that I that I'm not working or that I am working uh, for this company because of all the systems that has literally been set up in my life. I'm able to just focus on a couple of things that I'm good at. Mm-hmm. And when you think about five years from now, <laughs> no wait let's say 15 years from now. Okay. What would you love? Literally waking up on an island with my adult kids at this point and um, just being like the, the mere thought of not having to, you know, answer a call or um, have to get ready for the next appointment or interview or anything like that. Just being able to wake up on some island where we're learning a different language and just living, just Mm -hmm. enjoying, just observing with no need to be anywhere. Like Mm. I would love that. Yes. And I hear it. (laughs) And there's a part of me that goes, you're really driven. And I think you, I also get the feeling that you love inspiring other people. A thousand percent. So how long do you think you could do that island? (laughs) I currently do that now. And, uh, but I still have something that I have to answer to. And so I do coach women um, in the space and I loved it, but it's uh, the way that I do it. It's a lot of energy and emotions and one-on-one. And what I've realized is exactly what you said. Like, I do want to inspire. I do want to influence. I do want to teach. I do want to help people create stories. So I have created, you know, sales with Suli to where women are going to be able to have all these aspects. And I did it for a year and I found that I loved it and I watched the women progress. And it's what I'll be transitioning to on these islands of Mm -hmm. being able to take those one-on-one calls, but not necessarily knocking doors, not necessarily the mundane running but I'll be able to wake up on an island, be able to help influence someone and then go back to the same island. So truly scaling and truly creating a legacy so that you can live the life that you want as a present mom with your children and continue to inspire other women so that they can create their own version of the path that you've created. But to do that, sorry, go ahead. ahead. No, the, the way that you use the word and like, and is such a powerful word. I used to just be black and white, like, okay, I'm either, no, I, I'm just a mom or I'm just a sales rep. Like y- you can be, and, and a, like all these mm-hmm. things, you, yeah. you, you can have it. And so for the women that potentially want to hire you to help teach them, I imagine it could be pharmaceutical sales. It could be network marketing. It could be yeah. door to door. It could be, they want to really develop their brand and sell themselves online. Yeah. I mean, is it, is all of it? 
Yeah. So I was helping women in real estate. I was helping moms who were um, doing like essential oils because the concepts and the principles that I teach have more so to do with you and the way that you are perceiving yourself. Like the com- the sales and everything showed up in my life after I figured out who Sui was, like after I found the confidence. And so I do a lot of, you know, the steps and the tools to be able to get to that point. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, I could be an owner of Lululemon or, oh my gosh, I could create an at home, stay at home school for my community or for my kids or holy cow, I can create a platform that's going to be able to help people get out of debt and things like that. And so, yes, it's for all Oh, yeah. Thanks. So some people will say, I'll see it in order to believe it. <laughs> and I think it's the other way around. What I'm hearing is you believe it in order to see it. So you yeah. first got clear with what is my story, got clear with who am I as a confident woman that's clear in the life I want to create and how I want to serve. And as I shift my beliefs around who I am and address those assumptions that show up, I believe it and then I see it and then the sales yeah. come and the life yep. come and you get to now relay that to others through yeah. storytelling. Yeah, because you're no longer attached to the outcome anymore because you're already like, you, we just know that we're a badass. Like things are going to mm-hmm. happen for us because we know who we are. Like we stand our yeah. truths, like we know. Mm-hmm. And it's your, the way you do it, I know that you know you're a badass. (laughs) I also feel your humility and your feminine softness. Mm -hmm. And so there's there's that um, nuance to it. Yeah. And I definitely feel like it was um, something that I had to to learn, like starting in the space where it was just kind of like, you know, stats and numbers and and, and all these things. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to be chauvinistic. I don't want to be these things. And, mm-hmm. you know, getting into therapy and counseling and, and coaches, you realize that there is a way to influence and um, there is a way to love and appreciate yourself at the same time too, mm-hmm. not just be, you know, this, I guess. Any last parting words, anything that feels unsaid that you'd like to make sure is said? Yeah, for those of you women, like just period, like here, just the living, like just know that you're enough in any capacity, uh, just being alive, just waking, just or just waking up and showing up for you. It's, it, it's enough success for other people to want to do the same things like we just forget how influential that we can be to our next door neighbor by just smiling by just knowing who we are and appreciating the other women around us. Like when we learn to be able to uh, uplift each other and when we learn to be able to compliment each other in private and in public, um, our daughters, our sisters, our our great, great granddaughters are gonna be able to have the courage to do the same thing in the societies that we're all growing up in. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm grateful for who you are on the planet and who you are in your family <laughs> and who you are in the breakthrough mastermind and who you are in the work that you do and the women that you inspire and also the men that you work with and the boys that you raise it helps to along the journey shift their view yeah um, yeah yeah it does mm-hmm. so thank you it's been such thank a delight you so much. yeah no uh, mariah like you're beautiful like you just you make people just, yeah, love themselves even more. Thank you. Yeah, of course. My pleasure. Until next time, thanks for listening in. And for those of you on the Women's Vibrancy Code podcast, how fun is that?